This one let's do another topic video now I do have some pretty fun stuff I want to discuss and hopefully you'll stick around and we'll get through all the topics I want to talk about but let's go ahead and get into it now we do know that there's been a lot of news from McFarland a lot of you know moving and shaking so <laughs> we do have some interesting things to talk about some stuff I've wanted to discuss for a while, so we will have to, you know, get through all the topics. Hopefully in the end, we'll have a better understanding after we communicate, you know, <laughs> our thoughts. So let's get into it. So recently, just randomly, somebody commented on one of my videos and they were like, you know, Mitt Farland. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I just had to laugh and, you know, scratch my head and be like, okay. Like, I don't understand why people can't just either love it or leave it and, you know, just let it go. Because that is something that I do. I, if I don't like something or I'm not interested in something or something displeases me, I stand way back away from that, you know, whatever it is. Give it a wide berth. Why would I waste my time on something that I just obviously do not enjoy or care for? It would just be a big waste of energy on my part. And I can't, <laughs> for the life of me, I can't understand why other people just can't do the same thing. And that's their, you know, right to do whatever they want or comment whatever they want. But for me, it's just kind of, you know, mind bending. That's why they just cannot let it go. The hate for McFarlane. <laughs> but definitely McFarlane living rent free in their minds because they just cannot stop thinking about him or commenting about something that McFarlane does. That would be like me commenting on something that Hasbro does for legends or something. I have no interest in it. Don't really care. So I don't have anything to say about it. Anything that that company does, but some people just cannot stay away. They are, habitual <laughs> pretty hilarious and one of the main reasons i would think is because we all know this and that is that hate sells more than you know positiveness i don't know why but you can review whatever you want or talk about whatever you want make a video about whatever you want but if you just keep it in a positive mode or even give an honest you know, unbiased review that is definitely not going to get more views than if you just trash something and drag it through the mud and say it's, you know, the worst crap you've ever seen. Then you get, you know, your million views from those videos. <laughs> we all know this. I'm not telling no lies. It is a fact proven by the numbers. And sadly, when you hate on something, it people get really interested and want to check it out. And that's perfectly fine. I have no problem with that. I just stay away from things like that. Kind of reminds me of that David Spider guy. Now, I, I have watched a couple of his videos like early on, but I'm not sub to him. I don't watch his videos every time. So, in fact, I haven't watched a bit, one of his videos in a long time. But I do click on the video and then read the comments, but I don't let it play. And the comments tell me a lot a lot about what the video is and you know how it's going and i have noticed that sometimes people will say like if you hate batman and you hate mcfarland why do you keep reviewing these figures and i remember even hearing him say one time that like more batman that's enough batman like i'm tired of batman and then he he goes on to say that well i guess it's kind of my fault because i keep buying them and i keep reviewing them and the main reason I could think that he does that is to get the views for his channel. And trust me, he could 
dislike McFarlane or dislike the figures, but he has put himself in a point to where that is what people expect when he reviews a figure. He has to trash it. He has to find some little thing to talk negatively about it. If not, he will not get the views, but it's a free country. <laughs> He's allowed to do whatever he wants. That's fine. But I just have no interest in reviews like that, which is another reason why I stay away from a lot of big channels that look at McFarland stuff, because although they might not say it, they might not make it so obvious. They, they tend to do like the underhanded comments and the negative, you know, underlining tone. And I just really do not like that. If you're not going to be honest to me, then I'm just not really going to listen to you. You would have more chance of me being interested if you just <laughs> came out and said, I don't review those figures because they suck and I don't want to review them. And I would have more respect for you. But sadly, that's not the way it goes. The hate just, you know, flows freely. And that's fine. You even see it a lot, how people try to like, prop up older DC lines, like, you know, DC Classics, DC Direct, uh, DC Essentials slash DC Icons. A lot of people like to, you know, say that, oh, those were better lines than McFarlane. Like, I wish those lines were still around. Well, <laughs> where were you when those lines were actually being sold and they did horrible sales? I mean, that's why they don't exist anymore. Even DC Universe Classics, which I collected actively, I have the complete run of Waves in package, and I also have them loose right here in front of me. But it came to a point where the sales were not there, and that line ended up going under. They turned it into a Batman line for a while, and then they switched it over to Mattel DC Multiverse, which I was never a big fan of. The designs were just, you know, not appealing to me. And at the same time, they were just pumping out those movie waves. Suicide Squad, Aquaman, Batman v Superman, Wonder Woman. I just could not get into any of those live action waves. So I kind of, you know, got away from collecting at that point and would just, you know, go back and pick up DC Universe classics that I had never found or that I was missing in my collection all up into the point where Mattel lost the license and it switched over to McFarlane. Now I recently just came across a podcast and <laughs> these guys were talking about what is the best ever you know DC line of action figures and you had one guy who just you could tell he dislikes McFarlane and he really wanted to push he even went back to like superpowers and said that that was the greatest line ever. Although it was a really small line, they did have a couple of vehicles and some pretty obscure characters. But you can't compare, you know, 1970s action figures <laughs> to an up to date action figure, you know, brand new articulation and design that are current to action figures. You just can't compare it. And every time he would try and even, you know, prop up DC Classics or, <laughs> or DC Direct, the guys that were talking with him would, you know, tell him, no, I still think McFarlane is getting up there, you know, as much as <laughs> you don't want to talk about it. There's, you know, obscure characters, there's vehicles, better articulation, mass produced line that's in the in the hundreds of numbers of figures right now and you could just tell <laughs> the guy's sadness and like his heart was breaking because his contemporary collectors didn't agree with him that mcfarlane is starting to push past to what we have seen and pushing a dc line that is breaking numbers opening up for a better line in total i mean when you put this line, all what we've seen, the vehicles, horses, thrones, I mean, animals, obscure characters, when you put it all together, it just dwarfs any other line, even DC Universe Classics. Now, is it the best right now? I would have to say no, but he is steadily pushing it to where it is going to be considered either the best or one of the best DC lines ever. And of course, we're not always going to agree 
I, I just saw a review where a guy reviewed this, you know, Wally West Flash, and he said he said this was crap. And there is some points where I agreed with him, but where I don't agree with him, everybody has his own image of what the Flash should be or what a figure should be. Of course, he brought out the, you know, Barry Allen Flashpoint Flash and said that this is the greatest Flash ever made and they should have just made this Wally West out of this body. And I beg to differ. The reason being, I really prefer this slender, you know, speedster body to this you know, Blue Beetle and Booster Gold Buck. The legs are way too thick. The arms are not proportionate to the legs. This is just a sleeker design of a figure. Now, do I say he's wrong for saying this is a, a better Flash? No, because that's his opinion and everybody has different tastes. Everybody has preferences. As I said, I really enjoy this body book for a Flash figure. At the same time, I could really appreciate this classic version of the Flash, Barry Allen. And, and then he brought out the fact that like this one is taller than this Flash. So he's taller than Batman. And that's, you know, to me, kind of like a blanket statement because I have a Batman right here and he dwarfs, you know, this Flash. <laughs> this is my hush Batman. And he dwarfs this, you know, Wally West Flash. So it all depends on what figure you want to use to display it with, what actual setup you want to make, like what Justice League you're going for, which Batman you're using, which Superman you're using. All of that really comes into play when you're trying to pick your favorite figures, display your favorite setups and your favorite versions of superhero teams. So although I had to disagree with him, it's fine if he thinks this is, you know, the best Flash ever. That's fine. I think it's a great figure. I just personally prefer this body design, but we can all agree to disagree. And that is the beauty of collecting figures. You may like, you know, new modern designs, different ideas, and you may also be stuck in the 1970s and want all, you know, pure classic versions of figures. But the good thing is that McFarlane is trying to please both sides of the aisle, as well as trying to sell to your regular consumer. And as we know, he is doing a pretty good job. Now, we do know that all figure lines have their problems. None of them are perfect. I was, you know, talking to somebody about how a lot of the McFarlane waist articulation, they don't have a crunch forward. Now, the only rebuttal I had was that there are some figures now that are starting to have a really good crunch. If you've taken a look at any of the newer movie Batman figures, they have an awesome forward crunch. Who knows why? Every once in a while, you'll get a random, you know, figure that you're like surprised at the forward crunch. But there are just aspects of the articulation for McFarlane that are just far superior to other lines. Now, I don't want to get into it, but what I'm trying to say is that all lines have figures that don't articulate as well as some of the other ones. Not all characters are, you know, gymnast or trying to do the splits. Some characters are bulkier and bigger, and it's fine if you can't get them to get into some crazy contortionist position. But all lines have these issues. It's not just... McFarlane's are statues or legends are perfect because I've seen a lot of legends that still have some pretty old articulation, specifically like the angel. That one recently came out and he still uses that old 1980s swivel waist that has no side to side waist articulation. And, you know, that's fine if you're fine with that and you love that figure. You know, great for you, but that just tells you that all lines have their ups and downs. Now let's get into McFarlane himself right now at this point in time. He has really come up, risen up the DC Multiverse to a huge line. As I said before, opening up to 
different characters, vehicles, things that we never saw from other lines. You're looking at a line that's already in the hundreds number. I mean, you just can't beat that <laughs> by sheer numbers. Now, of course, they're not all bangers. They're not all fuego, but a lot of them are some pretty nice articulated figures. Getting better and better as we speak. And not only is he working on this line and expanding it and opening it up, he's also expanding the McFarland toy empire as a whole. As you know, he's doing tons of movie-related stuff, music-related stuff, TV shows. I mean, he's just all over the place. I just recently saw that he signed a partnership with UFC. I mean, he is just <laughs> like building up his empire like crazy. And although, you know, I know some people hate it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to see it. He did some Hasbro, you know, figures. It doesn't matter what they are. The whole point is that he's, you know, doing it. At the same time, he's, you know, running DC Direct, making tons of statues. He's, he still has the whole Spawn line that, you know, I don't really talk about a lot. But they have tons of figures as well. As well as, you know, merchandise. I mean, it, he's just all over the place. And I recently saw an interview with him where he was talking about the recent partnership with Marvel and, you know, Disney. And I got a big insight of what happened and, like, the way he sees it of how the whole thing came to fruition. Now, I have been hearing rumors about McFarlane and Marvel, Disney for a while now. I just wanted to wait before I even said anything because every time I bring it up, people are like, no, no, that's never going to happen. You know, McFarlane will never do Marvel characters. And one thing they don't understand is, I've said this before, McFarlane could sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves. He is a master salesman. That is one thing he does get. He may not know every intricate detail about each character or he makes some crazy decisions about where he puts together a figure but he knows how to sell he has you know a vision that you just cannot deny and he said that ever since he started working with disney with their with their mirrorverse line where he did some disney characters he you know got his foot in the door and then when they did the Avatar figures, that really showed them that he, you know, knew what he was doing and could pump out some really cool figures at a good price. And they were really happy with that. Then, you know, he's got in there with Hasbro doing some G.I. Joe and Transformer stuff. All of that came full circle to where he kind of put it out there, you know, he would be interested in doing some, you know, figures or whatever statues. And he said that they actually asked him, you know, hey, what about if you ever wanted to do stuff based on your artwork? That would be pretty cool. And he's like, yeah, that would be, <laughs> that would be pretty cool. So that is how this whole, you know, making statues of Marvel characters came into being. Now, they are specific, you know, art designs, specific versions of these Marvel characters. He did mention that for the most part, they're not going to be articulated because of the whole Legends license that they have. He didn't want to, you know, step on their toes. So they're going to keep it statues for now. And <laughs> I had a big laugh when I started hearing, you know, the earthworms coming out and starting to say, oh, you know, they're statues, they're statues. It's my legends, my legends. Like, they were so out there to defend their honor that even though McFarlane is making Marvel characters, they're not going to be figures. They're going to be statues. Who cares? The whole point is for McFarlane <laughs> to get his foot in the door and make that working relationship to where he could talk his way into something else. Now, do I think he'll ever make articulated Marvel figures? I think there is a chance that he may do that. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to, you know, make legends or take over legends. I don't think so. I think it'd be more like he'll get a license to make like a, a wave of figures and it'll they'll be seven inch. 
but they'll be based on his artwork or something like that. Specific designs of Marvel characters, but it'll only be a limited license. It's not going to be a master license or he's going to be able to do whatever he wants. But a lot of that comes down and depends on how these statues sell. If they're good money makers right now, Disney is the actual owner of the Marvel name and brand, not Hasbro. It is Disney. So he doesn't necessarily have to go through Hasbro to make any of these products. He has to get a good working relationship with Disney, which he basically already has. And for, and for me, the biggest benefit of this is that even if you don't like it, any money that he makes from making these Marvel statues, depending on how they sell, which from his track record, they should sell relatively good. If not, they should sell out. That money will go into McFarlane Toys and eventually will go into DC Multiverse. So for people that think McFarlane is going to lose the license, that's why he puts out so much product because he knows it's coming to an end. Uh, I wouldn't hold my breath because he runs DC Direct. He's making comics for the page punchers. He has, although many don't want to admit it, one of the hottest toy lines, one of the most sought after toy lines. Now, it's not every figure he puts out that is, you know, awesome or blows people's minds but every once in a while he will bring out something that is very sought after and is a masterpiece basically action figure perfection so no at this point you don't have to be worried that you know legends people don't have to be worried i don't see that really happening but you may see a short run of McFarlane seven inch articulated Marvel characters, more than likely based on artwork surrounding McFarlane. And in the end, that is what we should all look forward to is new things, opening up the market for action figures. It's hard enough as it is to track these figures down and, you know, <laughs> build your collection. I don't understand why we can't just, you know, come together and enjoy our collecting. But anyways, you guys let me know what you think down in the underground. But as always, keep hunting out there, keep collecting, keep customizing, and I will see you on the next one. Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman.